So the 1920s is really, it looks like a period of, of uh, real development, real development and change for Exeter City Football Club. It kicks off, I mean it really starts, we've come out of the back of the First World War and you've got the F National Football League starting which really gives sort of a boost to a sport that's been massively interrupted by, by the First World War. And so Exeter City become one of the founder members of the Football League in the old Division 3. So the first games played in 1920, the start of the 2021 season, and you get about 6,000 people coming through the turnstile to watch City win 3-0, with William Wright scoring the first ever league goal for the club. It doesn't pan out like that for the rest of the decade. The highest finish is about eighth in the league. They get to the third round of the League Cup one time, get knocked out by Leeds United. But it is a time when the club kind of it, it starts to find its feet, it finds its identity, it becomes more recognisable as the Exeter City people will become familiar with for years after that. Um, one of the issues is financial. Entering into the Football League comes with its own difficulties as, as modern football fans will recognise. And so City have to develop players um, and sell players, one of these being the famous goalkeeper Dick Pym who sold to Bolton Wanderers for £5,000. And that sale, amongst a few other transfers, that summer in the early 1920s, means the City can then buy the ground outright. They can own the land at St James's Park and they can start building the football club. They can own their football club and develop it. And the community plays a big role in this as well. Um, supporters groups are coming together, raising money and funds. And again, things that we're familiar with. And of course there's other stuff like youth development and one of the players that emerges in the 1920s is Cliff Bastin, who this stand that I'm still on now is named after years and years later. But he's a local boy, he goes to Ladysmith School and he only plays a handful of games for the city. Um, and he's picked up, he's sold to Arsenal, he goes on to be one of the best players in England, winning the league, the FA Cup, playing for England etc. So that's cool. It's cool to see these players coming through. And then there's other changes. That's on the pitch. Off the pitch, you get lots of changes around the stadium. So in 1926, the old grandstand, the original old grandstand, burns to the ground. There's a fire. The fire's so hot, it can be felt all the way down where the John Lewis building is now. There's a massive blaze. People come out to see it and everything is completely destroyed. Everything from the roof and the walls and the seats to the players' kit and their boots, etc. So this really forces the club into action and it forces the community into action. And they, they both get together and they, they raise the necessary funds to build the new grandstand, the old grandstand. And that's been in place for, for 80 years now. And then on the other side, you had the popular stand, and the popular stand, or the Primrose Bank, that used to be uncovered. They get a roof on that, and it becomes what people recognise later on as the cow shed. So the 1920s, a real time of change on and off the pitch. Um, it sees developments that the club won't see again for another 80, 80 or so years. <laughs> 